Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run over me. Hey, this is Jan Lewis. Welcome to be my guest today. We have from the Worcester Review. What do you hear about this? We have Diane Mulligan, who is the outgoing managing editor. Diane is sitting on our far left. And in the middle, Kate McIntyre, who is the managing editor under the tutelage of Diane Mulligan. Diane, you were the editor for how long? Um, this was the seventh year that um, I was managing editor on our masthead. Um, I have been involved for about a year before that as well, uh, learning the ropes. So, so did you meet? Did you two meet? Like Kate, did we do hired, and then you met her, or how did that work? Well, um, I am an academic as well as a writer, so I have just started a new job as an assistant professor at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Yeah. And when I was interviewing for the job there, I actually met Diane um, oh. because um, folks from the Worcester County Poetry Association were starting to envision some sort of a relationship, yeah. perhaps, between WPI and the review. What a great idea, yeah. yeah. You know, I read about Diane and Kate in one of the, um, let's see, it was the uh, Worcester Telegram and Gazette on a Thursday. Worcester Review names new managing editor, and they may mentioned Kate, of course, and Diane Mulligan, who served in the role for seven years. And let's see, I hope to find new ways to bolster the visibility of the work of Central Massachusetts writers in the national literary community. Uh, you are an assistant professor of creative writing and literature at Worcester Polytech. This I had no idea. You can these are this is what the Worcester Review is. Tell us about these books. Go ahead, either one of you. <laughs> <laughs> They're full of like different authors, right? Mm -hmm. What now? What happens here? So we're an annual journal. Mm -hmm. um, we publish one edition a year each fall, usually around November. Um, and throughout the year, we receive submissions from writers from all over the world. So um, we accept a really small percentage of what we receive. Um, it's, it's very selective, and our mission is to um, bring new and established voices to our readers, who are primarily, most of our subscribers are in central Massachusetts, but also to preserve the literary history of central Massachusetts. That's a good, who is this fellow on the back? Is he the founder? That one is, is that's our Cole Porter issue, right? Is that mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, that's so. Cole, so that's Cole Porter. Cole Porter. Yeah. I was wondering, there's different writers groups around, and, and I interview authors from all over New England. Maine, mm -hmm. could be New York, could be Rhode Island. They just had the Rhode Island Authors Expo, and that was so packed, it was overwhelming to both them and to us visiting. How would somebody, if they were interested, if it has to primarily be poetry, or can it be other things too? No, we accept both um, fiction and poetry. Yeah. So short stories, uh, 5,000 words or fewer. Mm -hmm. And poetry submissions, poets should send us three to five poems. Okay. And, um, you know, if we like any of them, you know, they might be selected for publication and make it into a future issue. Who designs these fantastic covers? Who does that? Um, the cover layout um, the past several years has come from our book layout company, which is Hobblebush Book Designs. Um, they're in southern New Hampshire. Yeah. And the cover art is usually chosen by um, the managing editor and the art editor and the layout editor kind of in combination. So I love it. It's And how often is it? 2018? Oh, it's yearly. Mm -hmm. That's okay, right. so And how do people go ahead about getting the Worcester Review? How would they do that? Well, they should um, take a trip to our website, mm -hmm. which is www.theworcesterreview.org. And from there, you can um, purchase our back issues, our current issue, or what we really hope people will consider doing is um, becoming a member of the Worcester County Poetry Association, oh. which is the association um, that provides us with our operating support. Um, and it's a really lively and exciting group. Mm -hmm. 
um, that organizes poetry events um, all over the county. Um, something that really amazed me, I moved here from Massachusetts and I took a look at the WCPA's calendar mm -hmm. and there are poetry events at least three or four a week. You moved here from Missouri? I did. Okay, to Massachusetts. When did you come from Missouri? Over August. Here? Ah, so you haven't been here too long. I haven't. What do you think about our culture out here? Look at Diane and I are like smiling. Like, uh oh, culture I, shock. No, no, I love it so you much. Do? Yeah, yeah. People are incredibly outward looking. They're incredibly passionate and engaged about things. Yes. It's. Are you a poet yourself? I'm a fiction writer. Fiction writer. Mm -hmm. Have you got any books out? Not yet. Not yet. I'm finishing two though. Okay. So you'll soon let me I know hope. so we could get you on the show. Sure. Now Diane reminded me she had been on the show probably back in 2012 when we were first starting out. <clears throat> and she had a book on back then, and you have how many more now? Yeah, so at the time I had my first novel, which was Watch Me Disappear, which yeah. is a young adult novel, and um, in late 2013 I published my second one, which is The Latecomers Fan Club, which is women's fiction, yeah. and in 2017 I published What She Inherits, which is my third, and um, is also women's fiction. So. Are you getting out there and, and giving presentations and signings? I'm trying to. It's a, a little hard to juggle um, between my job, I'm a high school teacher, um, and <laughs> working on the Worcester Review and trying to get more yeah. writing done. It's really hard to get right. out and, and do events. Where so. do you teach, Diane? I teach at St. John's in Shrewsbury. Oh, my dentist's children go there. <laughs> 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 He's got St. John's, uh, what, uh, <clears throat> stickers whatever on his SUV so every time I pull up I know which car is his because he's got those on so you're doing high school what what grade in high school um currently I'm teaching <coughs> juniors and seniors what what so, topic um juniors do American lit and seniors do British lit so oh my gosh now did you where did you go to college I went to Harvard you went to Harvard oh, what did, did you major in English <coughs> there you go English, English. That makes writing sense. specifically yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so when you met each other now, did you know she was kind of coming on board and take, come on? I, that was the idea, yeah. So we were sort of uh, thrown together to chat and uh, have a meal and see, you know, for me to provide some more information about the Worcester Review and to get a sense of, with Kate's experience, because she has previous experience with literary magazines, yeah. how she might be a good fit for us. And Kate, I think you said it started in 1970. What now? Two. 1972. Who started this? This is a great idea. The founding editor was um, Michael True, um, who's still very much involved in poetry in Worcester. Um, so he was one of the founding members of the Worcester County Poetry Association, and he started the review. Um, he was not editor for very long. Um, he realized that wasn't, I think, the best fit of his skills, but then I'm not sure who was next, but before me, Roger Martin was managing editor for 27 years. 27 yeah. years? That's so. a long time. <laughs> That's a long time. <laughs> you don't see that so much. People like, oh, okay, I've been here two years and I'm going to the next. Which, where are you going to go, Diane, after? <laughs> oh, you teach. I know that's enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to hope for a little more free time. Um, I'm currently the department chair of my uh, department, so which is a new role for me this year. So I have new responsibilities at my regular yeah. job. Now, Kate, when you came here and you saw everything that you were going to be, have to do, were you overwhelmed or you thought, go for it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I come from a strong background in literary journals. Yeah. Uh, my previous position was actually the managing editor of a different journal, the yeah. Missouri Review. Um, so it was just really exciting. You know, yeah. something that I think is really unique about this journal, many journals are affiliated with colleges and universities yeah. and get operating support sure. from them. Um, it just makes it easier to sustain a journal over the long haul. That hasn't been the case with the Worcester Review. This yeah. is a community project from its very beginnings. And it's coming up, you know, um, on how many years? This is 2018. Long time. It's been around since 1972. It's just, it's sort of an unprecedented run for a journal. Did it start off like this, like such a beautiful shiny covers? No. What was it, a newspaper before? Um, it was originally more of a, um, I don't know what the printing process was, but the earliest ones are like staple bound, yeah. um, much more of a sort of handmade product. Yeah. Um, it has been published in this particular form for quite a while. So, but it, when you look back at the earliest ones, um, partially its printing technologies have 
changed and come a long way. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it certainly was a, a smaller, simpler book in the beginning. Mm -hmm. and, and there were even some years where instead of being one publication a year, they put out two in a given year. So, so Diane, when you came on the show in 2012, you would probably belong for about a year, maybe? Let's see. Yeah, I got involved in... Mm, I'm I've lost track of which year, but I got I got involved and in, um, Roger Martin mentored me for a full year as I, and I at the time was considered assisting managing editor yeah. and then the next year sure. I was taking the lead. Kate, where are you were told me where are you based so people can find you? Where is your location? Oh, <laughs> um, so our physical location is the Sprinkler Factory. Okay, which is a wonderful um, sort of old factory space mm -hmm. um, and there are art shows there, there are readings and performances and, and sort it's of it's down past uh, UP, WPI, right? It is. Yeah. So if you were on Park, <laughs> not Park at, yeah, Park and you pass Price Chopper and you're going down like mm -hmm. this and where you meet Grove, are you before that? It's off of Lincoln Street, so if, oh, I know Lincoln. Okay. Yeah, so near where Lincoln Street and Burnt Code Street branch off, okay. um, the uh, the particular street the sprinkler factory on is Harlow Street. Yeah, there's a I know uh, there's Hanneman Hospital, and then there's yes. a fork. It's it's very close to Hanneman. Okay, and you take a left on to Burnt Coat? No, it's off of Lincoln, going towards downtown Worcester. Oh, co coming up the other way. Okay, because so I go to Hanneman, <clears throat> it's a medical place, and then I know there's a funeral parlor at that at that fork. So you would be coming towards Worcester. If you're coming towards downtown Worcester, yeah. And you're down there. Now, how do authors, go, poets and short story writers, go about reaching you? How can they do that? Well, the best way is through our website. Mm -hmm. um, you can find instructions for how to submit your work to us. Um, I think it's maybe important to note our submission periods. Mm -hmm. um, so for fiction, we have two uh, submission periods every year. We're open the month of September yeah. and the month of January. Okay. And for poetry, um, we're open uh, for a longer time, for just sort of one long period, um, October through the end of January. Um, so you can find out instructions for how to submit on our website. You can order copies of the journal. Um, there's an email address for us there. Can you um, subscribe? You can subscribe. So you yeah. get it in the mail. You, you get want. it in the mail. Okay. Yeah, and your subscription also grants you uh, membership to the Worcester County Poetry Association. Now, what what does the membership entail? What's that like? It sounds sounds like fun. What what's it like? It's very fun. Yes. <coughs> yeah. Membership. So uh, members receive our mailing about four times a year, which is the events calendar of all the poetry events that are co-sponsored by the Worcester County Poetry Association or sponsored by us. Um, and so you receive all that in a physical mailing, and also can opt into email lists to stay in touch, and it supports the membership dollars support the events and the Worcester Review and the WCPA and the Worcester Review we're it's really important to us to pay artists for their work yeah. so when we hold a reading we do our best to be able to provide an honorarium for the reader or um, we do provide a small honorarium for each contributor to the review so. and they're all local all these authors are local no no, no. where do they where do they hail from all over the world. And they find you. They do. That's amazing. <laughs> I thought it was contained, you know, to Worcester County, Blackstone Valley, but this no. is everywhere. No wonder I don't <clears throat> I don't really recognize a lot of the names because right, they're not right. from around here. Right. How many members do you have? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. I think the WCPA probably has about 150 members currently, something around there. Yeah. And then our circulation of the review is somewhat larger than that because mm -hmm. we have other um, people who get the review who are like our contributors or past contributors. Are like they that. all ages that contribute? By, my son's a poet <laughs> and I'm thinking mm -hmm. if I could ever get him to realize that he's good. <laughs> you know, some kids are like, oh no, you know, oh no, they'd one, I'm like reading it and I'm like, yeah, it's pretty good stuff. It's simple, it's to the point. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a haiku sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. with, I don't, we are talking with Diane Mulligan in the beautiful purple uh, top. Oh, she is the outgoing managing editor of the Worcester Review. I'm taking a look at these, they come out once a year. Poets, authors, and Kate McIntyre, who is the new managing editor under the tutelage of Diane at the Worcester Review. Now, this has been in existence since the 1970s. 
I, you must, I mean, over the years, have you kept copies of how it evolved? You must have that. We do. In our office, we yeah. have uh, sort of the entire run on a bookshelf, and it's very satisfying to be able to pull out a copy from 1982 and see what we were publishing. How long does it take you to get this all through into the publisher and get the amount of books that you need? You, how do you know how many you need? By subscribing, those people? Yeah. yeah. Basically, um, we have our, a database manager who tells us how many books will be mailed, and um, we buy extras for ongoing sales and events. But mm -hmm. the whole process, um, we're a very traditional publication, mm -hmm. so it's about a year from when we're gathering the materials until the publication is out in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if somebody is accepted, how many is it? It's judged in, right? It's a juried in type mm -hmm. of thing. How it many is. people on the jury? judging it? Well, so our total staff is about 12 people, um, and they specialize in genres. So we have uh, currently, I believe, seven poetry readers and three fiction readers. Yeah. Each submission is reviewed by um, two of the readers on staff. Okay, so that's a pretty good, that's a pretty fair thing. Do mm -hmm. you, either one of you, do that? Do you, are you on the judging committee at all? Not currently. Have you it's, done that before? Well, um, as managing editor, you can be the tiebreaker sometimes. Yep. So um, yeah. if there's a split decision, yeah. um, typically it's um, something is accepted if both readers say yes. If both say no, then it's not. If it's a split decision, yeah. the managing editor has some say in that. It's, like I'm, it's kind of like you're on the spot. Like, does it kind of make your nerves go into a twist, like, uh-oh, <laughs> if I make the decision, I'm going to have half of this crew hate me? <laughs> Is it like that? No. <laughs> like, oh, no. It's a very kind crew. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think we really like to honor the work that our staff is doing, right. because they're working very hard to read and select these, and you want to make sure that the works that are included reflect what the staff have chosen, and you want to honor people's preferences so yeah. I think more yeah. that people are happy when things they selected are in yeah rather than saying I didn't pick this um, yeah. are the authors and the poets are they all different ages different generations mm -hmm. oh, how low yes. and high, high do you go with your authors what's their age Mm. Teenagers it's a good up question to because we are not always, um, we don't always see our authors. Yeah. A lot of the communication happens. They don't send a virtual picture along with their, their application at no. all? No. No. So oh. do, do you know offhand, Diane? I don't. I mean, I know we have had submissions from people as young as high school age. Yeah. Um, I know that we have um, also submissions from people in their 80s. So yeah, it's that's cool. pretty full range. I'm looking at the back of these. these are, it's called the Worst Review, and it comes out once a year. Poets, authors, short stories, all, tons and tons of these people, these writers, these authors on the back. And each book, they call contributors, each book has a long, long list of people who have contributed to this book. Do they have to pay a fee to contribute at all? So we use a submission system called Submittable, mm -hmm. um, and it makes things very easy both for the contributors and for us um, because it keeps track of the su uh, submission sort of in its own database. Mm -hmm. And there's a small fee associated with that. Okay. Yeah. Doable I think for people, right? I think it's, what, is it 3 or 350 Yeah. It's, we basically oh. tried to keep it pretty similar to when people were sending paper submissions yeah. right when you if you're sending postage plus a return envelope that's addressed and stamped it's basically a very comparable amount of money um, yeah. it's three you mean three dollars and fifty yeah. okay oh that's yeah. beautiful <laughs> it's, it's yeah. not intended in any way to it only offsets what it costs us to yeah. provide that service mm -hmm. um, to do online submissions and manage them well we use a service and the service costs us money. Um, yeah. Any money we bring in that goes above and beyond what we've paid to offer submittable is put right back in the pool of money that we pay back out to anyone whose work is accepted. So this year we paid out $1,000 in honorarium. That is fun. It's almost like you're getting a, well not a scholarship, but an award like Blue Ribbon and that type of thing. Do you have a shindig at the end of any of the years? You get everybody that can get there, get together. Do you ever have anything like that? We have done that. Um, we did not have any events this year. I think uh, a couple years ago we did an issue on Esther Forbes, who mm -hmm. wrote Johnny Tremaine. Yeah. Um, and we did, that was the last time we did a big event. And we invited any contributors close enough 
to attend. And people, some people drove even two hours. Contributors oh, yeah. drove to be part of the celebration. What's the farthest? Now you say they're from all over the world. What's the farthest that you could think of they're from? China. China. You have China. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just amazed that they're how they find you. It's, it, it, tell us again the website how people can reach you. www.theworcesterreview.org. Worcester Review. Now, you to see. Oh wait, what volumes number one and two? One and two numbers. Okay. So the latest one is the maroon one. The maroon one. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one was 2018. Mm -hmm. and I've got 2017 and 2016. I just love the colors. Whoever, especially this blue one. I you know, blue. <laughs> but you know, I, I just. Do the people okay it first before it goes out to put into, put into print? Do you have to okay the cover? Mm -hmm. That's gotta be yeah. fun. We do. Yeah, we do. that's the art part, right? Mm. Have but neither one of you have contributed to the, any of the stories in here or the poetry or anything? Uh, editors can't contribute. Oh, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, we're the ones who are part of choosing, so we right. can't give ourselves right. that. Advantage. Maybe they could be a place <laughs> in the back for the editor, right? Well, why well, not? There so are, I, have, I have a letter from the editor, and next year Kate's right. will be the oh, letter from right. the editor. That's so we, um, can yeah. you can you be able to contribute a short story? And well, when I'm not on staff, I could I could see if anything gets through. They're a tough crowd. <laughs> really, <laughs> oh, really a rough crowd of. Do they come from all over Worcester area? Yeah, and yeah. they're volunteers, right? Yeah, that's These right. Are volunteers and they're writers. Mm -hmm. Now, if they want, do you have room for another one? I mean, can they get a hold of you and come back on? Can with you? You know, it depends. Um, I think with our current level of submissions, we're at about the right number yeah. of readers. Yeah. Um, but there are plenty of other ways to get involved with the magazine. Um, if anybody's interested, we'd love to have you um, join us. How come I have? Are you over at Barnes and Noble or Tatnook? We're not. Barnes and Noble is a little bit tricky yeah, how they um, <laughs> supply magazines, yeah. um, and then Tatnik um, is. I think they will do it on a consignment basis, but they also have kind of regulations of how they how they run it, and this it hasn't is why been practical. I haven't seen it. This is why, you know, if this were on the, the stacks, you know, and is it in libraries? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, okay. I don't. I don't. So over at the Worcester Public Library, it would be over in the magazine section or in a book section? The Worcester Public Library might have us in multiple collections. Okay. Um, I believe, I believe this is the case, that they have um, an archive set yeah. that doesn't circulate. Right. So um, in their Worcester collection of things pertaining to Worcester. Um, but I believe they also have one that would be in the regular like um, periodicals. It, like, again, I have never seen this, and I, boy, never even knew it existed till I read about this in the paper, the Worcester Review. It comes out every year. You've got different poets contribute, short stories, authors from all over the world. Oh, there's even pictures, okay, in pictures inside. That's right. So do you have artists? Oh, I didn't know yeah. this. Yeah, there are art features every year selected art by our art in editor. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, wow, you've got some from very beautiful, I would say, conservative to funky art. I just <laughs> And the artist, usually the artist and the color pages is a local artist. Um, oh. So while um, the poetry and fiction comes from a very broad range, yeah. um, the best, one of the best ways for poets to be um, considered is to enter our annual poetry contest. That's most local poets in the journal come through the contest. Sure. But um, for visual artists out there, our art editor is always seeking connections with local artists. And so we yeah, try the art editor. Oh, yes. I didn't know that. <laughs> this packs more of a punch than I realized. <laughs> Poets, authors, artists. Here's an example. This is somebody called John Vo and Swim Good. And I don't know if you can get that, Paul, but that is a funky piece of art. That's a fun <laughs> one. Very, very uh, what modern abstract, that type of thing. Do you get a lot of those submissions to you? Do they send them to you? Art submissions are, um, they usually go straight through the art editor. Mm -hmm. um, I know that our art editor is um, Rochelle Frazier, and she does a lot of soliciting directly. She's heavily involved yeah. in the arts community. So. How would they go about uh, reaching her? Does she have a special? So they could email the main email address, okay, and the main. then Kate would put them in contact with yeah. Rochelle. This has been so much fun. We've been talking with Diane Mulligan. She is the outgoing manager Ed, managing editor of the uh, Worcester Review volumes. And then coming right here is our managing, the new managing editor, Kate McIntyre. 
And Kate, you've been there since was it August? August. So that's what, right. as soon as you moved here, you were you were. I was involved. It was great. <laughs> what hours do you have to work for this? Well, it's very variable, um, and it's work that can be done from anywhere, sort of at any time. Um, you know, on average, I would say probably under ten hours a week. Oh, and I, a lot I of that you're doing this like correspondence. A lot. Okay, I thought. Mm -hmm. Is it a small office? Can people come visit you? Um, it's a very small office, okay. yeah, and it actually is not that frequently um, open. Okay. So if people um, want to connect with us, the best place to do that is at a Worcester County Poetry Association event. A Worcester County Poetry Association. Mm -hmm. Is there a special connection phone number for that, email? S so the Worcester County Poetry Association website yep. would be the place to go, and I believe that's... They can get the, there right through our site, they can, too. They yeah, can it's, a, click it's one of the links from our off site. of our okay. site. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, our office is really only open during events at the moment. Mm -hmm. This is so cool. Do you, but you don't, you don't bring them around to sell them, like, like at a, a book fair or anything like that. You don't need to. This is just... I am amazed this has been out there, and I missed it. <laughs> we, we have done some book fairs from time to time, yeah. so it sort of depends on what our staff availability is, since we are all volunteers. But yeah. we have done um, um, the Mass Book Festival in Boston and um, Mass Poetry in Salem, so we have done some of those. So you both are volunteers? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought you were taking on a paying position. No. You're vol <laughs> I love volunteer. Oh, my gosh. That takes, you know, people don't realize the chutzpah it takes to be a volunteer. I know I volunteered at UMass Medical for, oh, how many, five, six years. And um, it's just as if you have a job, really, in a way, mm -hmm. because it's, it's a responsibility. You've basically pledged to show up and give your time. Are you looking forward to new things coming up, you think, or not, Kate? You think it's going to stay oh, the same? W yes. Well, one thing I'm very keen to do, and I think I'm well positioned because I'm at WPI, yeah. um, which has such a focus on technology, I would love to um, create a digital archive oh. of all of our back issues. Wouldn't that be fabulous? Yeah. Um, and I think it would be so consonant with our mission, you know, yeah. really spreading what we do. We have all of these wonderful um, features that we published in the past on great Worcester poets, um, folks like Elizabeth Bishop and uh, Charles o Olson, Etheridge Knight. Um, so I think it would be wonderful if we could get those archives from that little office in the sprinkler factory think, yeah. into a digital forum yeah. where anybody can access them. Now, uh, are you going to be leaving any copy or anything down in our library at all so people can catch on to it? Did you oh, want to? Oh, sure. Oh, good. Yeah, okay, we'd be so delighted. The Worcester Review, it does exist, and I had no <laughs> idea. I read about it in the newspaper. We have Kate, Kate McIntyre. She is now the managing editor, being tutored by Diane Mulligan, who's the outgoing managing editor of Worcester Review. I bet they're going to miss you. Diane. Yes, we will. Well, I'll still be around. So. <laughs> She'll be around. Yeah. She'll be around. And then you have quite a challenge ahead of you, too. I do. Right. You've got a great teacher. I do. You really do, because you tell, I know that you love it. You do. And you're going to let me know about these books that you've got. <laughs> so we get you on. And how did you lose touch with that? Oh, definitely. Oh, we have. Well, since I went to the expo in Rhode Island a couple of weekends ago, there's going to be, we try to schedule everybody, it's not all authors, but it's a tsunami of quite a few of them <laughs> because it was humongous. Hmm. Uh, it was called Pawtucket on the Roads, the Roads on the Pawtucket in Cranston. It is a huge building and it was wall to wall to wall authors. And when an author tells you they're overwhelmed, I'm like, yes, I'm a guest, and I'm overwhelmed. So, All right, well, thanks so much, gals, for being on. This is great. It's called The Worcester Review. Uh, pick up a copy, whatever, down in our Upton Library. Go to the Worcester Library, and uh, they should have some copies there, too. A very well-kept secret in our area, and I'm so glad I know about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you so much. Bye-bye.